Hello all developers, uh, welcome to you. My name is Nikhil and today I decided to upload a tutorial about UI pages so that it could be helpful for that the developers who really wanted to learn and develop UI pages so that they don't require any second or third person for their development they can be able to do it by himself or herself. So let's begin and mostly today I will cover about jelly script. And friend, Jelly script is not the part of a uh, service now. It is developed by Apache Foundations. If you have learned about uh, Java, you might know Servlet. The we use to write uh, Jelly script for view. So let's begin uh, without wasting our precious time. So friend here I am using Sandigo version, you probably using some other version but uh, the process of development of UI pages is same for every instance so you don't need to worry about that. So let's begin. From the left navigation uh, type UI pages and under the system UI you will find UI pages okay. Let's open it into new tab. And here you can see all the list of the UI pages that has already been created out of the box. It's showing. So if you want to create new, click this new button here. And from here you can create a UI page. So as you can see on this screen friend here we have a three part HTML, client script and processing script. And today I mostly focus on this HTML part after this video tutorial if I get the chance to upload about client script and processing script I will upload. So friend uh, before doing anything just save it first by giving some name demo UI page okay it is saved. Friend here, as you can see this uh, tag, jelly script tag, it has this attributes XML NS string. This XML NS stands for XML name space and it is saying that J means jelly core, G means Clyde and uh, as of now just ignore these two attributes. And if you want to write HTML, CSS and JavaScript code, you have to write uh, inside this. This is the first rule. If you write outside, it will cause error. And here it is saying that it is version 1.0 and to encode all these characters, it is using UTF-8, Unicode Transformation Format. Okay. So let's have a use case that is to so show logged in username as well as the button if we click that button logged in user will log out for that i'm going to use one tag that is g evaluate okay g is called evaluate inside this you can write all the server side javascript code like if you want to query data, we query data from the database, you can write inside. So I want to query for logged in user. So user equal to new client record. And if you are learning UI page, you should have basic knowledge of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Not the advanced, but you should have the basic knowledge so sys underscore user okay user dot add query and sys underscore id here add user id okay 
it's query user dot query and user dot next so friend let's use this uh, user object to display the username okay so for that i am going to create one div element with the class name okay header okay and uh, before that I'm going to write uh, style CSS to remove all the default margin and padding. Okay. Margin zero, padding zero. Okay. That's it. And Inside this, I am going to use its thread tag to display username. So, if you want to display something, some variables value, you have to use expression. So, here I am using this expression to display the user. User dot get value okay and first name space gs no not gs user dot get value last name okay let's save it and let's open it in new tab and click this try button to see how it is working see it is uh, displaying this user logged in user here you can show you See, first name is Nikhil, last name is Gupta. That's why it is showing you. Next, we want button okay, to log out. It is easy, friend. We don't need to write any uh, complex script here. We just have to use an anchor tag. And before that, let's style this header. So, we have to select this class by using dot background uh, stdd okay color should be fully black dark black and padding 10 px and uh, before saving let's uh, create a anchor tag also here. a so hypertext reference will be slash log out dot I will not log out, but I just want to show. Uh, o U D. Okay, and let's class is link dash B T N. Okay, we will style this uh, anchor tag also. Save it. Here, uh, font size is different. This font is different. This font is different. Font size, and I want to display like uh, this. 
I want to uh, move this title and button to the right hand side of the header. So for that, do for display flex. As you know, the display of this H3, display of this H3 is block level. So here I am doing display flex so that it will show its next. It will show this anchor tag to this next okay next uh, next of this title you show this anchor tag to next of this title okay and and align items the center See friend, it is showing but uh, not aligned. Align item center thing because I have to wrap this inside button if possible. Okay, so it is swing. Okay, that's good. And I want a gap between them. Gap 10 px. And let's move it to the right hand corner. For that we have to do justify content flex end okay if you don't know about this uh, flex properties you can learn from uh, w3 school That's it. If I click this, it will log out. So I don't want to do that. Just leave it. Okay. This is our first use case. Okay. And second, I want to show list of all the active incidents in the table view. In the form of table view, I want to show the list of records of incident, active incident. Mm. So let's check if we have incidents, records or not. Incident. Okay. All. Mm. So I have a filter. Okay, so active okay, true. That's it. Uh, run. Okay, we have uh, this much of incident reports which are active. So. So let's uh, create a table. Uh, before that, we have to query. Uh, we have to query all the records. So to query, we can put all that uh, query codes inside this G evaluate tag. But this time, I'm going to use G to evaluate, and I will let you know the difference. Okay, G to evaluate.
so friend here g evaluate is used when we have a constant output and g2 evaluate is used when we we don't have a constant output uh, when we load our page it will query again okay but g evaluate this g evaluate will fetch from the catch and g2 evaluate will do the operations again and again when we refresh our page okay and uh, i have i've saved text um, document I did save some attachment okay okay this one see the difference is that if you want to write a GS code that you can use inside this tags uh, g2 evaluate and g evaluate the order of but the difference is the order of execution in g sections are evaluated output each catch use this expression to evaluate in the html person use this if it is a value it's a value that is going to be constant on each display and here g2 sections are evaluated output is sent to client browser etc use this expression to evaluate in the html person use this if it's a value that is going to change on each page display using this when you don't need to will make the display of the page slower okay this is the difference that's why i am using this g evaluate okay so again i have to query so var incident and new applied record incident incident dot add query and active equal to true incident dot query and just uh, return incident okay see and another thing is that here I have written like this incident semicolon it means this g2 evaluate will return something and we have to store into some variable so here i am using var attribute to store this value okay basically i am defining a variable using var attributes so jvar underscore incident We are just returning this object, incident object, and it will store into this variable. Uh, by using this object, we can display all the active records in the table. So, table okay. border equal to one and tr or first row with tr in our first row th that is number and third description cr description okay 
after that uh, we have to use jelly script tag that is j while okay j column while this is like a while loop and for the condition we have to put inside this but friend we have to write the condition in an expression okay so and this time instead of using that uh, curly bracket uh, we, we can use this square bracket as i already so this note b this is square bracket expression to evaluate html first use this if it's a value that is going to change on each page display. okay so that's why i'm using this and we have to do that j far underscore incident dot next okay and As many records we will get that many times we have to iterate this table row okay and in each row we have to display data so dd dollar j var underscore incident dot number okay and that short description So friend, uh, let's run it, save it, it's showing number, short description but data is I use here G2 okay. and save it. It is not showing control shift I. Let's see what is the problem. Applied record incident. Friend, if I use directly, it may work. Okay, this is incident number and the short description. But uh, the question is that why it is not working if when I, I am using this variable, right? Maybe, uh, friends. Uh, we can't return object. We can we can return a string value, but we can return object. Uh, like uh, let's suppose if I put here 
hello world okay and after this uh before this table tag let's do this variable J bar incident. Okay, save it. See, ah, uh, but why? How possible? J bar incident. Okay, and hope you understand here uh, what was the issue. So, we have to uh, design this because it is not looking good. You can see. So, for that, I am going to create a one row here inside this table PR. With one column, and that will use the space of two column. What I'm saying, you will understand. Call span two. It means uh, this uh, column will use the space of two column itself. Okay, so. Incidents, okay, and we didn't save. See, okay, and uh, let's give a class here. Uh, and friend, we can use a uh, bootstrap classes also here. Or let's suppose table bordered. Okay, see, or it will show. Mm. Class table bordered. I will remove this. Okay. Uh, next. I just want to copy this class name to style this table. Margin zero auto. By doing that, it will align horizontally center. See, okay, and uh, next, let's increase the padding of all these cells. So for that we have to do tr, td, uh, not tr, td and th. We have to select td and th, and we have to increase padding by using this property padding 20 peaks or 10 peaks. Okay, and save it. See. Is looking good now and okay it is looking good uh, 
I'm not uh, focusing much about style and fit. I'm just focusing about uh, this jelly script. And friend, I'm going to keep it as it is, and let's create a new UI page. Okay. Uh, let's keep it as it is, and let's create a new UI page. Uh, so let's go with. demo ui page 2 and let's save it so again i am going to use g evaluate g underscore evaluate okay let's suppose we have the list of fruits okay just for an example like uh, apple mango grapes okay let's see that's it i want to iterate and display using j for not while loop j for each tag okay so we have this g colon for thing each okay ch so how we can use this so friend we have uh, two attributes var and items okay so we are uh, jvar fruit okay and items i will let you know how it will work items so we are fetching fruits from this video uh, fruits okay Yes. so friend here one by one this value will be stored into this variable jvar fruit and that we can display inside this type to this uh, three okay jvar underscore fruit Okay, let's save it and let's run it friend see okay using that uh, you can iterate lists or array and we have other some other tags also like uh, uh, Let's suppose we have a variable called age, okay, and I think of 24, okay, or yeah, 24, or let's give it a 16 for an example. If you want to use the if condition of jelly script, you can use j colon if, if condition, okay. J colon if but here we, you have to use one attribute that is test inside this uh, you can put your condition so if you want to put your condition uh, we again have to use this expression okay template literal so age okay this age less than 80 less than 80 
we can show the message like uh, you are not eligible for blood donation okay you are not eligible for blood donation save it something wrong g for j if if we have a variable here b a r okay j var underscore age let's return this age here and instead of this age a variable we can use jelly script defined variable okay save it see see it is working it means it it will only take it will only take jelly script variable okay. so when this is the last tag i have used uh, but not the list there are many others so i have removed that variables uh, age here instead i have used that uh, variable inside this j set tag basically j set tag is used to set variable so yeah, here i have created one variable age j var age and initialize by value 20 okay and a line number 15 i am checking if age is less than 18 it will display this message will appear you are not eligible for blood donation if it is greater than equal to 18 you are eligible for blood donation right so let's try it see you are eligible for blood donation and if i will change this value by 16 and let's save it see you are not eligible for blood donation so friend that's all for today thank you for watching